You're now listening to Sleep Time Silver. Sleep Time is over, baby. Listen up, everybody, as you tune to this podcast. Sleep Time's over. Come closer to get the raw facts. Zach Moore's hosting on the show, for sure. Reporting live from the wide as you know. Talking Sleep reminiscing about the show. Sleep Time's over. Tonight's guest from Long Island to Sand Island and everywhere in between. Mr. Dave Caldero, and bringing a little bit of clarity amongst today's statics. Ew, no, Maddox, Somalia to the stars, and the only man I know that burns faster than paper, Sky Cameron, and your host, DJ Zach Morris. Beer, 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 beer. <laughs> So I gotta, I gotta say this before I begin. Welcome everyone. Sleep time's over. As I'm waiting for the, you know, the Lord's doing the, the five mic entrance that he always does, which is always on fire. I, I'm, I'm waiting by the, uh, for the people that aren't watching this, I'm waiting by the door to, to enter the, the camera. And there's, there's a couple downstairs. They're going at it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on down there, but they're, they're making out. He's, he's, touching, he's touching the boob, touching the butt. The tongue come out, the tongue come out. Tongue come out. And no, no, they're making out. They're going to have sex in the bathroom right now. Oh, I, I'm on fire. That's, a, that, that's the kind of show we got here. You just never know. They might come up here right now. We don't know. So that was kind of, that took my, my attention for this Tuesday evening. Sky, how are you doing? Good. Everything's all right? I'm not as good as these guys are having. No, they're, they're living their best life over there. Yeah. Unreal. So. How was your weekend, man? I heard you, did you DJ? Uh, yeah. You know, I, I did the thing that they call the disc jockeying. Uh, Two nights, two different nights. We went to, and this one, I really don't know what I'm going to do with this. On Friday nights, I do every third Friday, as uh, some people may know out there. I DJ at this place called Nobu Honolulu. Yes. It is a, a place that, uh, as we've said many times, if you're going to go there, you might as well take all the cash you have, maybe get more from just the ATM, and just throw it on, on the fire. ground. Just throw yep. it all up in the air in the ground. Set it on fire. Automatic $200 for one gyoza. So you're going to go in there, and I get it. No one... It, it, it's an expensive place. I get it, okay? And I DJ there on Fridays, and let's just say there's a lot of, there's a lot of seats that are open, if you want to <laughs> put it. It was a lonely night. Let's just say, you know, lon- loneliness is a thing, and then it leads to depression, and then it leads to some other medication. So what do you play on a lonely set, then? Okay, so as, well, as I'm entering there, and this is the third month in a row that just there's jack shits going on over there, okay? So I'm sitting, and there's been times... And I've been screwed on every time I go there because there was one time I had to play inside because there was rain and all of the, uh, the, the lounge area was, was kind of damaged. So I had to play inside. And then that's where I saw the creepy uh, mafia guy that was staring at me for an hour. And then that's, that was my <laughs> entertainment for the night. But then on other nights, it would just be like, there's nobody, there's nobody coming. And then there was, of course, the Samoan military gay night that was, uh, <laughs> that was crazy, right? Tune into a previous episode to find out that one. Uh, <laughs> So we fast forward to last Friday and literally zero people. Zero. So you and the, work, even, you and the employees. Yeah. It's me and the employees were just, you know, head nodding, doing that kind of, you know. I'm not even saying, I'm not even going to say negative 69. It was zero. So I'm sit, sit, standing there and then getting back to your question of what do I play. I mean, there really is no rhyme or reason of what I'm, I'm just, I just follow the format of what I was going to plan on doing. But I mean, I'm not going to play anything hype. Right. Like, I'm not going to play something like, Throw your hands in the air like you don't care when <laughs> there's no hands and nothing to go in the air. <laughs> so I'm just playing, you know, just whatever, just to survive right now. Right. Survival. And then I go on the IG story is what the, the, the kids do. And I'm just putting up, you know, ask me a question. And that got more excitement than me actually being out there, which shows that people are just don't go out. People are not social. They'd rather be on their phone or on their toilet. IG storying me and DMing me questions, asking me stuff. What was the best question of the night? Uh, what's the plan here? I think that was the, uh, <laughs> that was the one. Shout out to that guy. Uh, I never met him. And he's just like, what's the plan? You know what? That, that's a good question. And after that, three hours later, zero people. Wow. Really. I mean, I get it. Normal's expensive. Is I that the it. first time you ever dj to an empty room? I mean, I, I don't want to say like, it's not zero entirely. Like, there are people that come and goes. Right. They're like a couple. They'll come in, have one drink, go. A couple right. of people come in. You but know, it was... It was but like, it was zero things going on. Right. You know? And 
what do you do at that Tumble point? Tumbleweeds blowing through the... There it was. If, if I turned the music down, <laughs> we'd hear something blowing up. And then, so that was, uh, that was Friday. I, every time I do these Nobu events, I question my, my life. Hey, I you question, get paid, uh, though. Well, then. Hey. The light Them at the end of the checks still clear, right, dog? The checks don't yeah. bounce. Yeah. So there is that. But I would like to play for, for people. I mean, sorry. You know, I mean, yeah, that's the awe moment, right? So that's the one thing. And I get it. Nobody, nobody can afford Nobu, apparently. You, you buy one little... Uh, you should have just tamago. stood there and played Portis Head all night or something. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> then, then medication will ensue. <laughs> then we're going to get the antipsychotics ready. But that was Friday. So we fast forward to Sunday. I did, uh, I did that Sunday brunch. Yeah, which I scratch. never got to do at Scratch. You know, all the good people there. They got the... Tonight's the Jimmy Taco, uh, Taco Tuesday. Shout out to on. Brian Chan. Shout out Brian Chan, that crazy guy. And Jimmy Taco. I did uh, tacos out of town, so I jumped in for brunch. So I did the, did the brunch, 12 to 2. And um, I had a little, uh, another thing I had to get to after 2 p.m., as you may know, and I'm going to have to explain. Well, it was so, an inside thing, right? Uh, yeah. So We'll so fill I, people in. Right, right. So I want to I set, the, set the stage here for what I'm going to talk about. Because I don't want to, like, I hate when these, when these guys, they do inside jokes or inside stories. That's like college radio, like 90% of college radio. Like, they all talk about inside <laughs> stories, jokes no one cares about. So I want to set everyone up here so that we're all into this, this situation. So we, we, we do this little show here uh, every Tuesday. And apparently the people that are regulars that show up for this show and attend this show, they decide to all have a group date. And they all decide to go see the movies together. Yeah. Like, so fifth grade. And then, like, they go and they're like, okay, let's go see, uh, let's go see the John Wick, right? So I, I did not know this as of that night, but fast forward to the night on Wednesday. We, uh, we met up to go uh, talk. I was telling you about some news about the show, and we met up at Pig and the Lady. You brought that up about, oh, you're going to go, you gonna go uh, John Wick on Sunday? Now, can I justify why we didn't invite you? You you're, never want to come. You're you're antisocial. There, there is a there is a reason that we're all it's all being laid out. So we're gonna go on the Wednesday. You telling us you're telling we're gonna go on Sunday. You showed us the tickets because you know we reserved the tickets. Show this little group, this little line of people, <laughs> six people, God, wackos. And then so like, okay, you know what? I want to see John Wick. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna sit by myself. I don't care. Screw you guys. So go online, go on the phone, pick up the phone, go right there, do it. You go on the, and then I go oh. My favorite seat, FF, in the back. The FF back corner. 18, back corner. And then as you know for previous shows, the men's restroom is directly behind FF. So if you sit up there, insider tip, theater 9 or 10. You see the big action pack movie. You want to go, you go make shishi, you go right there. No woman's restroom. So clearly this was de developed by some guy. So I take the FF seat. I say the FF seat. And you know what, I'm going to sit there. You know what, screw you guys. So I go in there, but then the movie started at 1.45. Right. I was DJing till 2. So I was telling you, hey, man, I'm going to be late. 15 minutes of trailers. Right, right, right. So then I'm telling you this because you're the only one in on this joke right now. So then you guys all decide, oh, to get, you guys want to get Chubby's Burger, right? Because you guys want to get Chubby's Burger and then go eat in there and go look at each other and smile and then go walk in the theater. So I'm okay. Go do that. You know what? I'll get that too. Screw it. You know, you're, you know what but, you're making fun of right now, right? Friendship. I'm just, Which doesn't happen because, just, you know what? I was at Nobu Friday. No <laughs> friends show up. They're asking me questions. What's the plan? Got it. No, that's why, okay? Got it. Friendship revenge, bro. Noted. So this, okay, yeah. <laughs> so then, I, 2 o'clock, I have to rush over there. So then I get, I get the... who? Shout out to... Because uh, Kale's not here. Yes. Kale's on vacation. So shout out to the sound woman. Honey, My wife Lori's here. So she's, 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 she's on the headphones now. Hopefully we sound all right. I don't know. If not, we're going to... Who knows? That was really assuring. She shrugged just yeah, now. Yeah, that, that's assurance to me that we're going to get this figured out. So then we, we, uh, I get her to drop off the Chubby's Burger to me at Scratch before I, de before I stop uh, DJing. So one of, one, of the, one of the fellow guys that are part of your little, your little field trip, shout out Jane Ads. Jane Ads! He, of course, goes to Scratch to be like, oh, how come? How come you're not going to movies? Like, you're not going to movies? Well, I don't know about no movies, man. What are you talking about? I'm not going to movies. You know, swerving. You know, it's just how you swerve people. So, I, man, he's, he didn't know what was going on. He goes, you didn't know nothing, bro. Get out of here. So then he went back to go getting his, eating his burgers. You guys all sitting down, your burgers, you, girlfriend, Sean Iman's there, and his wife, all these guys. They're not listening. It's fine. <laughs> and Russ was there. 
So all these group of people, a group of six of people walking in a, in a row in the, in the theater, war theater. Two o'clock comes. I run out of there, go to the war theater. I got the Chubby's burger. You made it in time? Made it for like, I missed like the first, maybe I'd say 10 minutes. I mean, there's like, it's, it's, it's Keanu Reeves like headshotting a couple guys. I mean, right. I don't know what part of the movie that's supposed to be at, but right. that's 95% of the movies. Headshotting he guys. Stabbing and shooting people in the he's head. Stabbing and shooting guys. He's doing the arm the bar and then yep. double tap. And that's, that's basically the movie. So no spoiler. And then we're going in there. And then he's, he's, up, he's, up, uh, he's up on the screen. So I'm like, okay, the movie's starting. I sit down. Well, before I sit down, okay, I have to go get a drink to go drink, you know, with the chubbies, right? And this is always a problem. I go into these concession stand uh, lines, and there's, I always pick the one that's only got one guy in front of me, and then the register. And this one guy is the clueless, most inept putz you're going to find, who has no idea what to order. He's all excited, first of all. And then he, he's, he's with this other guy, two guys going to the theater. And then they're, they're like, what do we should get? What should we do? Should we get large or medium popcorn? I mean, what, shut up. What are you guys doing? I mean, have you been to a movie before? So they're figuring this out. Then the cashier is asking him, oh, do you have a, a consolidated membership card? There's no one that has a consolidated membership card. Don't tell me you got one. I do. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you're also dealing with a guy that watches, you know, probably 40 to 50 <clears throat> movies in go, the theater a year. All right. In your defense, I stand correct that you... You go every Sunday, right? I go or every, every weekend, Sunday. right? Right. Every Got weekend. It. Well, there ain't nobody else but you and nobody else. So yeah. they're asking this. I sorry, because these two guys were all excited about this card. So they actually sign up for the card in front of me. There's a sheet, there's a form that they're filling out or something. I don't know what they're doing. And they're all excited about this card. I'm just like waiting to get just I just want to get my diet coke. That's all that's all I get. Took forever. Took forever. I need the caffeine. I took forever. So then finally I get in there, I go into the theater, I go into the seat, go to the guy. There's a guy sitting next to me, local guy. Sit down, take out my Chubby's burger. Makes the noise, the rapper noise, right? right? And then I take out the burger. The guy goes to me, oh, well, what's that you get? I'm like, oh, it's a burger. Oh, from, not from here, huh? Oh, it's a Chubby's. Oh, nah. And we went back to the movie. <laughs> he did the oh, nah, and then that was it. It's either oh, nah, or for real. And then I'm not having a conversation with you guys, so why don't, what, what are you doing? So then just shut up. I got a burger. I snuck in food, okay? Great. Went back to chomping and eating with his mouth open. That's the thing with the local people too. They, they, they do this a lot. A lot Cabot of, does this. A lot of. Uh, they, they snap their uh, lips like that. A lot of sucking on the Come teeth on. too. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Sucking right. some invisible nipple or something. Yeah, like, yeah. Forget it. So then I'm watching the movie. And then watching the movie. Okay, movie goes fast forward to the end of the movie. Credits go on. I told him, keep them in the seats. I'm just going to go walk down there. I didn't keep them in the seats. We just stayed. And then you just well, emerged I, I go, from the shadows. Right. I, I just wanted to go immediately. Because I don't know yes. what you guys are going to be doing It was over like there. Aaron Wick. So I, I just walked in there. And I did, if you watched Last Jedi, you know, Luke is there. Looking right at I'm like, Luke, looking at Kylo Ren. I'm just like, you know, looking at him. And hey, guys. Three mics. <laughs> I just give him the review. That was his review. And he walked See you later. out. And he disappeared into the crowd. And that's it. That's it. That's, wow. That's what we do for comedy. How ominous. Yes. So that was, uh, it, was a, it was a shocker. Jay was shocked. Everyone... Uh, Quote of the night was quote of the day was uh, Don Iman said, "Was he standing in the corner the whole time?" I said, "Probably." This is why I'm not going to go hang out with you guys when you got people making comments like that. Yes, but, I'm going to stand there for two hours. So and just stare. Just overall, real, really quick. So why yeah. three mics? Why three mics out of five? Okay, it was better so, than the first one. All right. Uh, no, it was, it was better than the second. Better one. Better than sorry. the second one. Yeah, first one is 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 a great one. I but think it was the better than first the second. one's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is what it is. You it's just think it kind of wore out its welcome by the end or something? It's just a fun action movie. I mean, I'm not going to con consider it The Godfather. But, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like we're, we're going into this for a guy that's shooting everybody in the head. Right. And that's basically it. He's doing this classic movie, puts you in an arm bar. He does a little twist move, and then he clocks back, and then he just yeah. knocks you twice I, in the I head. I think the movie could be 20 minutes shorter. It's two, it's two well, hours, 10 minutes. It's a well, long, right, right. long it, movie of murder. Halle Berry now. still looks hot, it's though. Really she good. hasn't aged. She, she hasn't aged ever. So yeah. she's in there. You and, got dogs uh, running around. Right. And if you can go into this movie and suspend enough belief that, like, you know, it seems like 50% of the population in New York City are assassins, then you know what you're getting right, into with right. the John Wick movies. Yeah, hey, the right? Illuminati's they're, real, bro. They're cartoons. But a shout out to yeah. Hawaii born Mark DeCoscos. Yes. Who's that was in the, the movie. Yes, Only the strong. Hey, shout out Come to on, Iron Chef America. Yeah. Well, Come he's Wolf Fat. He's a good Filipino boy, man. He's he is. Yeah. Good martial artist. But he was in Hawaii Five-0 as, the, as, the, as Wolf Fat, right? That's right. right that's right. 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 So good, good for him. Good I for give him. it three and a half. I give it three right. and a half. So it's an action movie. I would watch it again. It's, it's a fun movie. I'm not considering this some epic 
Yep. Monumental. Uh, it's Keanu Reeves, for God's Two sake. days after the movie debuted, it, it debuted at $57 million. Uh, they announced uh, John Wick Chapter 4, 2020. Mm, One. There you go. Get ready. 2021. Excuse More me. people dying in the head. That's it. So uh, it dethroned... Uh, Avengers Endgame. Yeah, I saw that. Number That's one, incredible. But yeah. Avengers Endgame still killing it at the box office. And speaking yeah. of dethroning, I know you could give a damn, but it was the final episode of Game of Thrones. Right. On Sunday night. We're not going to give away any spoilers. Spoiler, it sucked. <laughs> um, it, that was it, a good laugh there, buddy. It, good. it uh, broke the uh, previous record of highest rated HBO show of all time, 19 million viewers. Okay. I would have to guess 18 million of them were, were disappointed. If not more. It was a disappointing weekend for all of us, but I just want to say this. I, I got a couple questions for you be, okay. before we move on to this yes. one. Uh, okay, what went wrong with this whole situation? Why is everybody pissed off? Okay. And then why was it done in the format that it was? It wait two years, and then we do six episodes. Right. So what, what was Game the reasoning of, for this? Game of Thrones wanna... opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one at this point. Well, they, but, what was the corporate but, decision here? But, what the corporate you know, what reasoning? It is, what it is, it's like the creators of the show were basically following the books. Yep. Then the guy who's writing the books, George R. R. Martin, he basically stopped writing the books. And so they had oh, nothing to go it? off. They had nothing to go off of after the fifth season. Okay. The guy didn't finish the books. They had no, no other source material. So they have no so true ending. So basically they said, well, we got to blaze our own trail. We got to write our own thing. And then they kind of got overwhelmed and yeah. then just wanted it to be over with. So eighth okay. season, even though it was the highest rated show on cable, pay cable, they just kind of were done. They said, well, right. you know, we want to, we're just going to well, take it to where it, it was. Then but I, I look at this show as like, it's like, it's like eating a, a, a delicious seven course meal in a fine dining restaurant. And then your eighth course, the eighth season is like a hot pocket. They just give you a hot pocket at the well, end. Well, I, I still would eat a hot pocket though. I, I think a hot pocket's great though, actually. But uh, yeah. <laughs> There you go, see. But you know, for for what what the, the mythology they yeah. built up to what the payoff of for the characters you get in the end, I, I thought oh. it's, I thought it stunk. Okay, so now I officially don't need to watch this show. I think you're good. You're all right. All right. Okay, good. I think That's you're it. Right. That's the end of that. But then. did Sorry, you hear guys. about this? You heard online. Over one million Game of Thrones fans have signed an online petition to get Game of Thrones final season remade. <laughs> That's not gonna with happen. quote unquote competent writers. That's not gonna happen at all. And then the writers of the show jokingly said they want to start their own petition to have the fans make their own damn show. I like it. That I like. That's good. Tell them I'll shut up. Yep. Good. So uh, speaking of shows with zombies, Game of Thrones has zombies. Uh, I heard you finish two zombie shows on Netflix. Oh, I finished one. Finished Black Summer. All right. Black Summer, that's excellent. Four and a half mics if you wow. guys watch that one. It's, uh, it's reality-based zombie shows. Like what really would you do in the zombie, if the zombies were to come down, the zombie apocalypse? Like don't give anybody a gun because they're going to just shoot everybody. <laughs> So that's basically what this is about. Nobody trusts anyone. Everybody's freaking out. And the zombies aren't really the problem in the show. It's, it's, really, it's, it's humans getting pissed off at humans and freaking out and shooting everybody. And what's so. the other show you watched? So then the other one was uh, the Korean show, and which you, was like Kingdom. You're not a fan of Korean stuff. Not really. I, no, no. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't eat the kimchi, but I, uh, I, I do eat what Kingdom's bringing. And it was a good show. I, we have like one more episode, two more okay. episodes to go. But, but you said that's five mics. As of right now, yeah. Wow. It's a medieval time, so it's, it could, you know, Game of Thrones people, you might get into this. It's medieval times in Korea, but the king is a zombie. Okay. And that's what the premise is going into the beginning. So no spoilers there, but that's what they reveal. And off they go, and it, cool. all hell breaks loose. All right, yeah. so Kingdom, I'll, I'll put that on my so, list, man. Go. So Watch we got that. quick uh, pop culture stuff going on. I know you're a fan of the Saw series, the Saw films. Any fans of the Saw movies in the house? Anybody like eh? gross horror? Yeah. Anybody like things cutting up? Well, uh, Chris Rock, comedian no. Chris Rock, is now co-writing and producing a new soft film. How random is that? <laughs> Whoever and, did that moan, I like it. That was good. Yep, that sums up the whole thing. We can bypass this one. He says that he has a new idea okay. of how to take the series in a new direction. And Yeah, he's going to have Adam Sandler come on and David Spade and bring all his boys on there. And then what are they going to do? It's going to be some comedy. I think it's going to be more like race, race politics, kind of like what Jordan... Peel did with Get All Out. Right, I well, think that's finally what he's going to try to do with we, the well, series. Can we change the name to, of Saw? Because I'm tired of telling people, oh, you saw Saw. I'm tired of that. But that's a... <laughs> UNC Saw. Can we just change that? <laughs> can, you, can we change, can we change like, you've seen it. You know, can we have Chris Rock, you know, do that? I'm tired of that. You, you catch yourself saying, I don't want to deal with it. Let's right. call it Seat, maybe. But you've watched them all. Yeah. You've seen them all, all the films. I saw Saw. Yeah, I saw Saw. One, two, three, you four. saw all the Saws. I saw all the Saws. See, it sounds horrible. All right. Change that, Chris. Uh, right, speaking of uh, movie news that got everybody pissed off on the internet, uh, oh, they, Warner Brothers up. Pictures has cast a new Batman. 
and everybody lost their shit. It yeah. is Robert Pattinson from the Twilight films is now cast as the new Batman in Matt Reeves' Batman film coming in 2020. Any thoughts on this? Okay, I'm going to swerve you here. Okay. I actually think it's going to work. I think so, too. I think the gamble is going to work. We all hated Christian Bale's casting when they cast him. We all hated Michael Keaton. And we all hated Michael Keaton. So. And we all hate Twilight. But, and we all hate that Pattinson guy because he smirks every time he does a line. It just doesn't look like he's, like he's buying into his own script. But Pattinson, I, I think, is going to work for this. I, think I, it's, I, I have faith. I, I think he could be a dark enough guy that will bring in the new people, but then I, I, I think it's going to work. I'm just going to leave it. I, I, I agree. I think, I think it's stunt casting. Like It's a risk, but I think it's going to pay off. All right, in random any kind news, so Taco Bell is getting into the hotel and resort game. They're opening up a Taco Bell hotel in Palm Springs. I like it. There you it's go. It's a multi-million... It's like a it. multi-million dollar Crunch resort the wind, called bro. The Bell, and it will feature Taco Bell products in every aspect of the hotel. Multiple Taco Bell restaurants will be on the property, including a fine dining Taco Bell. Why would multiple Taco Bell restaurants be on the... Oh. Taco Bell food will be delivered to your room 24-7 yeah, via room just service. Yeah, as well as Taco Bell knickknacks, clothing, and signature cocktails, Ben. Wow, the Lord. Get ready. I'm out. Get All right. <laughs> We're shutting this place down. Wow. Does, the, uh, I, I, I get, does it come with free diarrhea medication? <laughs> like, I mean, I, I'm not, uh, think of it. I'm not surprised because didn't Taco Bell win the, uh, the food wars according to Demolition Man? <laughs> yes. How's that nerd reference, How's that everyone? Re- Sandra Bullock told Sylvester Stallone yes. ta- that Taco Bell is the only restaurant available in, in the yes. future. And we wipe our ass with two shells. Right? Yes. Uh-huh. So we're, we're leading toward the paths of what takes place in Demolition Man. That's kind of what the world's headed to. So it only really makes so sense. So you, you believe, will you, will, be a, will you stay at the Bell Resort? Well, I'm not a really a Palm Springs kind of guy. <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, I'm curious to see what goes on with this. I don't know why there's multiple Taco Bells in the hotel. I mean, do you really need a multiple <laughs> Taco Bell? How big is the property <laughs> So that's uh, that's a problem. Uh, All right. Yeah. Uh, in yeah, other news, on. in other news, uh, Uber has announced a new quiet mode feature with their app. This allows uh, riders to tell their driver to shut up and don't talk to me uh, yeah, yeah, when confirming real. their ride. This uh, yeah. was created to address the growing number of complaints of female riders that their Uber drivers flirt with them or hit on them uh, during the ride. Yeah, there, there's some there's some people in here that deal with that. Uh, <laughs> Any thoughts would, about I, the? Okay, I just want to say this: yeah, the quiet Uber drivers mode. don't need to be talking. I mean, they're, they're, we're just where they got to go. What's the purpose of having a 10-minute conversation about nothing, which is going to be those one of two questions. It's going to be like, oh, how's it been tonight? Busy tonight? And that's all you got. What else are you going to talk about? So, yeah, I'm, I'm all for this. But we don't have time to be talking to these people. Right. If I was driving, I would not be talking to these people. Just, we, I got a job for you. You got to get to where you got to go. And that's it. What are we going to have a conversation for? I dig it. So, you know? I think it should... It should have always been quiet that'll, mode. That'll bail out a lot of women as but well. But isn't it funny that they're only creating quiet mode now? It should have always existed. Well, <laughs> you go figure out. They're trying to be social. But. All right. Uh, Lamar Odom has written a tell-all memoir called Darkness to Light, which hits bookstores uh, this week. It yeah. chronicles his longtime sex and drug addiction. And yeah. he says a direct quote from the book. I think this is a, a quote that will be on the back of the book. I had sex with too many strippers to count. Wow. Uh, living his best life. Lamar has also admitted in the book of using a fake prosthetic penis to help him pass drug multiple yeah. drug, drug tests. This is what I got to say is pretty ingenious. I want to talk about that because he, he got a prosthetic penis. This was back in like the mid-2000s. Did he have to match this, obviously he, the skin tone, right? Like, they got to match the skin tone. I'm like a mocha. So right? he got, like he got one of those, those moldings, those, those uh, cement moldings. So he gets the prosthetic penis. He gets his friend to, to urinate that's clean urine right? because the, the guy's smoking weed every day. Right. Shout out Nate Dog. And then he's, he's, good though. he's got the urine. He's putting it in his prosthetic penis. Right. He puts it in his pants. Right. And then he goes to the toilet of the drug test, right. pulls out the fake penis, squeezes the fake penis. Right, like a gogurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. And the fake urine's going into there. And that's how he passed all his drug tests to play in the Olympics. This was Genius. He passed the Olympics, and then he made it in the Olympics. So genius move for a guy that's, like, psychotic right now. Wow. So, yeah. All right. Other random news. Arnold Schwarzenegger was drop kicked in the back while attending an annual Arnold Classic Fitness event in South Africa. Yes, that was all over the Instagram. As the, the kids, you see that one? Kids do. Yes, we all saw it. And Arnold, uh, Arnold just like Arnold didn't it even off. flinch. Yeah, yeah brushed it like, off. Yeah, he didn't into it was my nothing. Snapchat. Yeah, stick around. Yeah, but it was so it didn't it didn't do nothing to him. So it's yeah. it's basically uh, with that said, I created the uh, the Mount Rushmore of Arnold quotes. 
I like it. There should be red flags to get you to not want to drop kick him from behind. All right. Because he has a lot of quotes. He has a lot of things. So many quotes online. So first one, I have a love interest in every one of my films. A gun. <laughs> That should give it away that maybe we should not drop kick this guy and ask for a Lamborghini because that's, that's what the guy did. He said, I wanted a Lamborghini. Right. He wanted him to buy him a Lamborghini. Another one is, uh, another cl classic one is, I've inhaled, exhaled everything. <laughs> that's pretty impressive to inhale and exhale everything. So, I mean, that gives it along, you know. And then, and here's one, you, you don't know this movie. Let's see, this is a movie quote. Uh, What's best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of your women. Yes, Conan. See? Beautiful. Sky camera, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, the final one, if it bleeds, we kill it. I mean, that alone, why would you do this? So clearly the guy wants a Lamborghini. He's a, he's a, is he a South African guy? Was that the he's South, South African? African guy? Was he the same South African guy that went to KFC every day? And he's like, he no, wanted, okay. They, wouldn't that be amazing if it was the same guy? Can you imagine we tied those stories in? Yeah, That's like a Game wow. of Thrones, right? All right, okay. in random hip-hop news, uh, XL, hip -hop XXL news. Magazine uh, interviewed Lord Jamar, and there's still a war between Lord Jamar of Brand Nubian and Eminem. Why? Uh, it seems like there's a war of words going on between the two MCs. Well, first of all, why is George, Lord Jamal coming up in the conversation well, in 2019? Lord Jamal just was yeah. asked about his feelings about popular rappers, and he went on to say that most black people don't listen to Eminem, and he thinks everything about him is whack. His fashion style, his voice, his flow, and especially his music. Well, he goes, we don't play him as a culture anywhere. We ain't playing him in the gym. We ain't playing him in the club. We ain't playing him in the car. As far as corny people in corny places, I can't speak for that. It's true. That's yeah. a hard Eminem diss. It's true. Yeah. I mean, I, what do you think of this? Well, I, I can't stand Eminem. So, I mean, it's fine. Lord Jamal, you know, he's just basically being the bitter old man. That he's going the bitter old man statement. I mean, this guy is in his almost 60, right? right? He's got a partner in Brand Nubian that's busy wine tasting right now. <laughs> so he could care Shout less to give a damn. Shout out Sadat X. He could give a damn. So he's just trying to get himself relevant and just being a bitter old so man. So it's just trolling. You feel and it's just trolling? It. Yeah, it's not necessary. Eminem probably doesn't even know about this. And first of all, Double XL. He did. A, Eminem did address him in the Kamikaze album. Well, that'll be the last time he does right. it. He's not re retorting to this. So then we got Double XL. Is that still a magazine? It's still a magazine. Are we, can we still find? Where do we sell? Where do we buy magazines now? Seven Eleven. They took them away. No, they took them oh. away. Barnes and Noble. <laughs> I guess so. Okay. Barnes & Noble still open, too. What, what is that about? All right. In People local, just want, like, chocolate. Right. And, like, Moving on. In local news, novels. in local news, a popular travel website called Big 7 Travel <laughs> had a poll voting America's sexiest accents. And Hawaiian or the pigeon accent came in number seven of 50 American accents. Can you believe that? Do you oh, believe that? What was number 50? They didn't, Do we have the number 50? Uh, no. they didn't, I didn't look at number 50. Right, I looked right. up number one, which was the Texas Draw. Texas Draw, drawl, right? Yeah. Number two was yeah. the Boston accent. Yeah, forget it. And then number three was the New York accent. That's better. Yeah, right. I'll take New York accent over Boston accent, quite frankly. Which so, is not really a big difference. So, but, okay. I, you know, I, I, I'm a, I grew, born and raised here. You're born and raised here. We love pigeon. We, you talk pigeon. Uh, I've never heard it being called sexy. No woman's ever said it was sexy. <laughs> Oh, how's you? Except maybe uh, the 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 Taters off West Side, yes, yeah, so you, you know, but so it makes me think. It makes me think of like uh, like like pickup lines, like 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 pigeon pickup lines. Because apparently, if it's sexy, we might as well work on our pickup lines in pigeon, right? You so. know, my favorite one is one Cavett did back in the day, which was like super sexy. Remember the one he was like, "Hey, like sample." What is that one? Yeah. That one was gross. Well, and of course, we got We got to give the rules. A lot of stuff Gavin says is gross, but <laughs> I we gotta give the the rules for pigeon now. You, you know, we gotta when you when you uh, yeah. here's the rules for pigeon. So you only can use one or two syllable words, right? You can't go over two syllables in the word. You know, you only can do one quick fire words. You only right. and when you talk, you have to uh, sound like you're asking a question. You always have to up talk, right? And then you always have to use or what whenever you finish the sentence, right? So whenever possible, there's always a sounding like you're asking a question. And then you're ending each sentence open-ended when you put the or what. So it's a very confusing statement that we you know what pigeon is, right? I feel you. Are you want to so, use one? So yeah. like, you know, we'd be like, mm. can touch you or what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or, or then here's one that I wanted to bring up because I don't know if people use this anymore. Oh, oh, you bad, eh? Do people still use bad? No. In a, <laughs> they don't is that not. like so 80s? It's like, is that like, like 89 it died? Bro. So like. So I just want to be like, oh, you, oh, you still bad, huh? Oh, you bad? Or you could be like, oh, you bad, bad smelling? 
That's an insult. That's not a hit up pickup line. <laughs> but shout out high school. We used to do that. But so you never had a pickup line. Like I mean, it'll only be like the I can touch you. I can kiss you. Like talk to me or. But you always gotta put or what at the end of the thing. It was for it you to know, work. It was always corny. You know, I would go be like, hey, "What school you went?" Yeah, you're, you're, you like you like drink. Where you where you went? Where you went to school? <laughs> Let me buy you something. Well, you, you grad. Yeah, you get gas money. You need ride. Exactly. I mean, it, it's everything's asking a question. You're always talking up. So, uh, shout out, <laughs> shout out, pigeon for being number All right. seven. All right. All right. Got Speaking of Hawaii, in a nationwide stuff. online poll. Hawaii residents rank number one in the worst sleep in America. The this is uh, this is the, everyone that's taken the poll. Basically, uh, the climate and weather were listed as factors. The average sleep of Hawaii people was five hours, and the average wake up time for Hawaii residents is six a.m. And when okay. asked in the poll of the quality of sleep, the majority of Hawaii people said poor. How's everybody sleeping in the room? Are you guys sleeping good over here? How's everyone sleep in the room? Yeah. Yeah, Does that exactly. sound accurate? All right, well, you know, well, I, there's only one thing to say about that guy. Sleep time's over. Whoa! Okay, what's next? What's next? All right. New York, uh, I had some friends in town visiting from the mainland. They went down to the North Shore and insisted at eating at North Shore, North Shore shrimp trucks. Uh, why is this so popular? Why is this a thing? I have no idea. My friends went down. They waited an right. hour in line. Got up to the truck, and then they said, they told him, said, right before it. they ordered, they said, it'll be another 40 minutes till you get your food. Forget it. No. Hour 40 minutes. No. This is Giovanni's. Oh, uh, forget it. Why? Why? Okay, first of all, Giovanni's overrated. It's just like right, right, right. trash. And I tried to talk and them out of going, but they insisted on going. Like, any other thoughts on this? Well, as you know, I don't go past Kalihi, so therefore, that's <laughs> strike number one. Strike number two, ain't no way, bloody hell, I'm going to North Shore, driving an hour, one lane, following a bunch of guys, surfing a bunch of tourists that don't know where they're going. Forget it. Three, I'm not going to go to some shrimp truck that's going to be on there that got dinged not too long ago for health code violation and, and all that stuff. So that's an issue. And then four, I ain't peeling no shrimp. I ain't got time, I ain't got time to peel. I like all it. Right? So therefore, we got four strikes. Get the hell out of here with this. That's it. They can go stay there, go get the Matsumoto shave ice, go live their best life, and then go take the selfies of Boomerang. I don't give a damn. All right. Let's all go. Right. What's the next uh, one? Lastly, it, it seems like uh, late 90s, Nostalgia is hitting Hawaii because the Backstreet Boys and 98 Degrees have announced concerts coming into town. Any thoughts on this? Uh, I got a few. Um, now, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to break it down this way. Now, if, if you're a, a woman, you are, you're clear. You're good. I'm not even going to ge- uh, go anything and discuss anything regarding any female fan of the Backstreet Boys. Fine. So... I got to say, back in 97 to about 2000, the peak Backstreet Boy run, was that, is that uh, correct, Scott? Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. I was in what they call high school, and I know no guy was into the Backstreet Boys. Zero, zero guys. We fast forward to 2019. These guys that are in our demographic, you know a few <laughs> of them well, are excited and tickled to death that the Backstreet Boys are here. And are just so excited that they're probably going to go, all guy groups going to go see the guy group is probably what they're going to be doing. So what I am just want to know is, what the hell is all of this about? Why is everybody so excited about a boy band that we give a damn about? If you, turn, if you play that song louder, I'm going to shut it, <laughs> shut it down. All right? You know, I, I get it. We're all, we're all supposed to be feminine guys now in 2019 and something. But let me tell you something. The Macho Man's coming back because I just want to know. I just want to know Why? Are guys getting excited for this? Now, if you're married and you take the wife, that's fine. If you have a girlfriend, big fan, that's fine. You can just go. But why is a group of guys going to go up and see the Backstreet Boys? And who are they going to look at? Nick Carter up close? I got some possible reasons. What are they going to do? I got possible reasons. Let's go with it. Let's go. All right. So, I mean, obviously this came out during the MTV TRL. This is AOL internet time. I mean, there's that's not, not much out there, you know. But so that's not selling me It's getting anything. a lot of radio play, no. all right? Guys are sometimes curious. To find Britney out what, Spears was big. Well, guys are sometimes curious Insane. to find out why girls are into something, right? Because they, you know. That's so. understandable, yeah. But now, but that's back in 90s, late 90s. Now, I'm only going to go for this as a Hawaii thing, but I was, you know, going to the karaoke bars quite a bit. I love seeing karaoke. And all the boy bands songs were huge in karaoke bars. All the guys recruiting to the girls, singing all the Backstreet Boys in sync, all that stuff. Okay, so it's a way to get girls. It's just another way to get girls, like how it was back in the 90s. I, the, I get it. At the end of the day, isn't it 
poppy, catchy music? No? No, because <laughs> you, 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 didn't, you, didn't sell, you didn't sell shit. Because what I'm saying is this. You can go sing it for the girl. You can go sing it to win the girl over. Oh, look at it all. Oh, you can do that all you want. But I'm saying you have legit over 40-year-old men who are going to call each other up and are going to be like, you're getting ready? What you going to wear for Backstreet Boys tonight? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to figure out. I want to be sold on why are a bunch of guys going to be so excited to see a bunch of guys singing ballads up on the stage. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. Okay? That's all I'm trying to say. No one is trying to... No one's giving me a valid reason. That's all I got. That's all I got. See, I only know one Backstreet Boys song. That's the one, that's that homoerotic one where they're in the haunted house and they're running around. I don't even know what that's called. But Backstreet's back. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Irony. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm just, uh, that's what I'm wondering about, okay? All these guys, they can, right. I just want to figure out what's their deal. All right, the Lord's got to bring you your blood pressure medication. You're, you're losing I still got some left over from last week. <laughs> All right. So, All right. We're, uh, as, we're, as we're wrapping up, just want to say uh, thoughts and prayers go out to Ric Flair and his family. He was hospitalized in Atlanta. He uh, got out. He's, he's, right? he's, he's uh, out. Yes, he's recovering. Right. He's recovering. So, and then uh, Hip Hop Birthdays, uh, happy birthday. Havoc from Mob Deep. He turned 45 today. Hey. <laughs> and he's still alive. Today yep. was the Notorious B.I.G.'s no, birthday. He would have been 47, Notorious B.I.G. 47, yeah, that's yep. right. That is correct. And uh, before we head out, uh, shout out to our previous guest, IA. Uh, Zubland is now on iTunes, Apple Music. Yeah, yeah shout out IA from last week. Uh, sponsored by Zima. Uh, he was on here. He was, <laughs> he was having fun. He was just, you know, he was tickled to death, giggling. Yep. Brother doesn't drink, so yep. it's fine. So, it's yeah, totally his, fine. Uh, his single, Zubland, is now up on Apple Music. So yeah, shout download, out. Download, purchase, support IA, our buddy. Yep. Astro Guillotine was... Uh, that was a pretty damn yeah, good performance. Yeah, shout out to Astro Guillotine. Amazing right? performance, yes. He is the, uh, the shooting out of Hawaii. <laughs> and so he didn't know how to answer that one. <laughs> he, he didn't know how to answer that one, but, but he is. He's, he's got a million things going on. And uh, shout out to tonight, everyone. Yeah, here shout out tonight. to everybody, our crowd. And yeah, and so we got coming up. We got Dave Cordero. Yeah, we're going to take on. a quick break. And we got Dave Cordero. From town. Yeah. Right, we're talking about the hip-hop dinner. Yeah. Ill Nomadic's here somewhere. I, I don't know where is yeah. he at. His lights. Is Ill Nomadic here? All right, let's take a break. Sleep time's over. Woo! Sleep time's over. We'll be right back. There we are. We're back. And um, last show of the uh, month. Yeah. Uh, month of May here. Got Scott. a week break. Yeah. Week break. And then we'll be back in June. June 4th. We'll label off. Uh, June, June's going to be a weird month. So I have to go into this for a little, for yep. a quick one. June 4th, we're going to be back with uh, Daryl Bonilla. That's right. Our second stand-up comic mm -hmm. on here and former owner of uh, Action Zone Wrestling. That's yep. my bank guy. That's if right. If you guys remember that commercial. And uh, performance from Scholar. That's right. And Go also just, just added, uh, Qualify is going to be back oh, nice. for like the 69,000th hey! time on the show. He's the first so member of the Five Timers Club. He's the first 69th timer on this show. <laughs> so Qualified and Stood are going to be back because uh, Factory 808 has their uh, one-year anniversary at the end of June. So we're going to come out and talk about that. And um, there's also like a big, here's some nerd talk. There's going to be a big wrestling pay-per-view at the end of May that it's only fitting to have those two guys on to talk about. It's a non-WWE pay-per-view. It, it's it's going to be at the MGM Grand. It, it's sold out in like an hour. And it's major. Yeah, okay. major deal. They, they signed a TNT, a, a TV deal. Really? The first wrestling organization since WCW to have a show on TNT. So lot, we'll talk about that. A lot of nerd stuff that no one, <laughs> no one here probably cares about. And then we're going to have uh, Chandra Lamb. Uh, she's going to be yep. on June 11th. Right. And she is the... The head mixologist for Southern Glazers. Right. So right. we might have a, a cocktail demonstration. And uh, maybe we'll have Rucka back too. Just get mac and cheese and drink. <laughs> and then we'll have that. And then uh, we're going to have a special show at... I will have to announce the, at the Light Sleeper show. The Light Sleeper store. It'll be the final show at Light Sleeper store. Oh. Tune in for that. Why, huh? I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. So Kevin will be on for the last uh, for the third week of June, and then we got the three-year anniversary, July second. All kind of dude, crazy stuff cavalcade of people. Right. If people use that word, potpourri <laughs> of people. So Glenn Maderos will be here probably. Yeah, special guest. Casimero will be here. Right. Who knows? You will be there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> qualified will probably be there. Maybe. And all right, so uh, there's a lot of stuff coming up for the month of June, but um, you have a hip-hop wine dinner, which you haven't had in a while. 
Yeah, and, haven't had uh, one in a while. Been trying to get one with this uh, next gentleman uh, for a while now. So right, we finally so got it going. Which, which leads into our first guest here. He is the head chef of Town Kaimaki. That's right. And it's a, it's a conglomerate that we got. Town Kaimaki, Mud Hen Water. Is, uh, Kaimaki Superette. Kaimaki yeah. Superette and then yeah. uh, Mahina and Sons. Yeah, right? that's like a consulting thing. Right, right. right. Uh, so we're going we're to find out a lot of stuff from this man. Let's welcome Dave Caldera. Woo! Really Thank you. What's up, What's up, bro? What's up? How's it going? Very well. Good to, good to get, you, get you on. Cause you were you working tonight? Just got off the line. Wow, you see, see how this works? Yeah, fresh off the line, man. Fresh off the line. That's a show, huh? So, uh, talk about the town Kaimaki here for the people that don't know, yes. which I doubt anybody doesn't know at this point. I'm surprised. But I really, town, town um, just celebrated its 14th anniversary. Wow. In the really? End of wow. March. Yeah. 14 years. How about that? Not know it. Yeah, we actually did a little alumni dinner and brought back some of the old chefs and cooks yeah. and uh, and server staff and stuff. It's wow. pretty, pretty fun. All so of that same town, Ohana. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah same, sure. location. same location. Same location. Fourteen years. Same spot. And uh, yeah, it was definitely got a little debaucherous in the end of the <laughs> evening. As, as it should. As it should. A bunch, of, a bunch of chefs getting together <laughs> and wow. a lot of alcohol. But yeah, wow. it was good fun. Um, and then, yeah, so town's been, f town's 14 years, same location. We had another spot for a little while called Downtown, and now we have... Uh, um, that was in the Art Museum. That was in the yeah. State Art Museum, yep. yeah. And, um, and then now we have Kamuki Superette across the street from town. That's yep. kind of a little breakfast, lunch place. Yep. Um, and then we have Mud Hen Water is right on the corner, caddy corner from town. And that does a little bit more local style yep. food that compared to town stuff. And uh, and then yeah, most recently we have a consultancy agreement with um, Mahina and Sons, which is at the Surf, Surf Jack. Jack Hotel. Yeah. yeah. So are you are you consulting with all of these? Or no. Are you so we we own and operate Town yeah. Mud Hen and Kamaki Superette, and just consult with Mahina and Sons. Is, is your food ideas in all of these establishments? Too? Yeah. Yeah. For okay. Sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Myself and my partner Ed have been, you know, like kind of yeah. mixing up our ideas for yeah, almost 15 years now. We we built town together, so it was almost a year before that. Wow. So about 15 years. So. <laughs> you, you you're running that block, man. You got them, and they're all like right in that yeah, same. Yeah, I mean, we got like this little this little uh, grocery store across the street from us, which is pivotal for us to have. Like, yeah. Right. So we don't want to buy that out, and then our bank is right across the street too. So I don't know what. <laughs> you don't want to buy them out. I don't know what else. <laughs> We could take over. <laughs> yeah, right. and you don't want to mess with the money. That, okay, yeah. Without screwing ourselves. Unreal. Yeah, but yeah uh, it's a unreal. good, good, cool little little corner. Now we got brood on the corner as well, and right, some right. stuff going on. So, so, so what, what what keeps you driving here? Because you you got all these places, all these areas. Like, Shit, my, I have an eleven year old daughter in private school. I think that's that's something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's it. <laughs> Shout out private school. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Un unreal. Um, so, so what what the. Let's, let's go right into the hip-hop dinner here. Let, let's, let's talk about what, uh, was the, the, what drove you to this. What was the theme? Well, you're East Coast guy, right? So, you're yeah, East Coast. So, so Sky and I have, you know, Sky's been, been peddling wine to us. I've been for, your sales rep for 12 years. Yeah, for 12 of yeah. the 14 years. So we definitely, like, had an opportunity to sit and talk and realize we have, you know, obviously he's like the, the hip-hop miser. He's there, the Somali you know? to the stars. So, That's what yeah. he is, yes. So, um, so we've definitely had a moment to kind of chat it up. And I'm originally from New York. Yeah. And definitely my, I came up through the industry in like the kind of late 80s, 90s. Yeah. And if there's one other thing that chefs do is listen to music as we cook. So there's just always been, been hip hop on in, uh, in the kitchen. Yeah. So um, kind of almost whether we liked it or not, it was, <laughs> it was on. You know, some people, Especially in New York. Well, That's kind of how it works, right? Where were you yeah. working in New York? What uh, borough are you in? Well, I mean, so, so some of the stuff we've been talking about for the menu go back, like, more so to my, my childhood and, like, my, early, my very first, first uh, food-related job was uh, I sold uh, pickles with this Armenian guy at, at, in Queens. <laughs> and, wow. uh, no, and he was, like, super into music. So he definitely was, like, one of those, one of those guys that just kind of opened my mind to all different types yeah. of music. 
Um, but that was like mid mid to late 80s. And then okay. I started work. Then I moved my way into Manhattan and started working okay. in a few other restaurants nice. there where there was a lot of other, you know, other music we listened right. to as well. So that year time frame is the influence of yeah, I'd say, going I into mean, this hip-hop dinner here? Or? Well, yeah. we're looking at a 10-year decade. So we're looking between 86 and uh, 96. Yeah. Okay. So that was kind of the... Okay. We're going to yeah. be pulling music specifically as an inspiration uh, between that 10 year, yeah. that decade. Oh, got it. Yeah, that 10 sure. year period. Yeah. So that yeah. so that, that's the theme that that span of time. So 86 to 90. Yeah. 86 and and to knowing previous uh, hip hop dinners that he's done, like the courses are all going to be geared toward either an artist or either a theme of that. Yeah. So what, what do we got here so for this? So this is kind of interesting. Like you know, we've been talking for months and yeah. months. Probably I would say maybe even closer to a year about this dinner. And I'm I've been just, chasing you down, yeah, man, for a while now. Um, but finally kind of made it happen. And in that time, I never really thought about what the menu would be. But um, since we started putting our heads together on it, I listened to recently listened to this podcast with David Chang. And um, oh, yeah, what was the what was the guy? The guy that's the host for uh, the evolution of hip hop. What's his name? Uh, Sh Shad. Sky, you know that one. Shad, he's a Canadian yeah. guy. But anyway, they had this cool podcast. And uh David Chang like make draws these parallels between food and hip hop, and you know yeah. like in the '90s when I first came up through food, like you say the word fusion of, in regards to food, and people like poo pooed it. You know, it was never like it was just we a still bad, do now, it was yeah. a bad thing. No, right, well, right. what's interesting about that is like they still do, but now people feel so much more comfortable using ingredients from from other cuisines in the cuisine yeah, that yeah. they're most comfortable in. Right, you know. Yeah. And it was really like David Chang was the one that said that he was always like, like intrigued by the fact that hip hop artists felt comfortable pulling from like pulling beats from other genres of music, yeah. from jazz and from from yeah. you know R and B or and funk and or whatever, and, soul. and, and yeah. using it in a way that it was never used before. Right. And they were never challenged by it. They were never like no one ever told them they were wrong for doing it. Right. Or, or questioned whether they were you know, knowledgeable about jazz. Right. And not Until they came for that sampling money. Beat it. Right. right. You know? It's again, money. Like, hey, That's why it comes down. And, right. Right. But it was so, a raw art. It was a raw art. And, right. and you as a chef, you pull from your life experiences and you're sampling from your life. For sure. You're sampling and from all the Coming up, like I would have never thought to use some of the ingredients. I've been in Hawaii almost 20 years now and I never would have thought that I use some of the ingredients that I use just that came into my palate Yep. you know, from, from being in the islands, um, in like my European Italian kind of roots, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's, that's kind of what we're going to go with. So this missed menu is kind of going to be like a little bit of a walk through my Italian American heritage, uh -huh. but, but with, uh, some, some local and Asian ingredients um, that I never would really use or even put on the menu at yeah. town. But in this, I'm hoping to, to like embrace some nice. some uh, so do some you, do you have the uh what, what what's the day of the hip-hop dinner uh so it's guys? gonna be thursday 20th. june 20th okay yeah. you guys got the menu figured out uh right this point? dave general, is tweaking uh, it general, right now all right we got yeah, the, the yeah, idea yeah, the foundation yeah. is, is yeah. set here foundation can you give us an idea of like like a little example of the courses that you got in, in, well, in mind here. i mean so this like i said going back to this this pickle guy that kind of was definitely like one of those guys that kind of opened my mind yeah. about music um, so I was like, I think 13 or 14 when I sold pickles at him and, and, uh, right next to, uh, right next to where he sold pickles was this Jewish deli that used to, that I would eat like tuna fish sandwich on everything bagel. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to do a little pickle green tomato, um, with like a little everything bagel cracker. And then instead of the tuna fish, I'm going to use katsuoboshi, which is like, uh, yeah. like, uh, bonito. Like, yeah. so you would use it in dashi and those kinds of that big fishy flavor so recreating that so so yeah so yeah. you get that you know oh. so it's kind of like i would eat this this tuna i know this sounds kind of weird but i'd eat this tuna sandwich and eat like a pickle from the booth yeah so like you know this kind of a strange an homage strange, to a, yeah so so i think that's right. kind of where where we're st that's like just like first, that alone first, is first, one little flavor you interesting know, but, right there yeah. but kind of a uh, i'm thinking it'll be the the roots of it will be more a little bit more so Italian. and then, and then you know he's got pasta so we're gonna do a pasta course yeah that's okay. my that's uh, my thing we're gonna right. we're gonna you know town's uh, concept has always been sp supporting local farmers mm -hmm. farm to table right. cuisine yeah. i've always wanted to do a farm to table kind of uh hip hop right. wine dinner because i wanted to be able to play uh you know conscious positive hip-hop music but also 
do mix that. in organic wines, sustainable wines with his cuisine. That's right. I thought it was just a perfect. Well, so mix. yeah, so that goes into like all different courses. You would name them. Oh like, yeah. For picking the lady, you had the summer pig jam, and you had the so, you had so, southern yeah, hip hop. So what for yeah. for town? So this is gonna be pr probably you know with 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 uh, Dave's background, we're gonna stick to the East Coast. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's gonna be an East Coast dinner from that um, time frame. And really, dinner. really like one of Dave's biggest inspirations was Native Tongues. You know, so okay, Dela, so Tribe, Tribe Real Soul. Jungle Brothers, you know, so yeah. we're going to be playing a lot of that, a lot okay. of that stuff, you know, but KRS-One, you know, we're right. going to be playing a lot of the classic. Is that, uh, classic. What, what, what's uh, your favorites from that, from that decade? Here? So I'm, I'm actually, so I was born in Queens, but raised in Long Island. So I, I kind of have a good, good mix, but I would say Tribe, probably De La Soul, Diggable Planets, that, that, right. that area. Good um, intro song, by the way. That's a good, yeah, the, the remix you. to yeah. Where I'm From. Yeah, there's yeah. a few songs like on there that I just like, we had. So to, I knew, I knew it was a them. good match because Dave said, he goes, I want to do a course called Where I'm From. Show me where I'm from and we can play Diggable Planets where I'm from. Oh, I'm how's like, you? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I found that's the right chef. And, and that's the remix, even better. That's and we played the better remix. version. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, wow. See, that, that's only... And all of these dinners, I mean, they... And uh, this one is going to be... A, the, the first mention of this course alone is, is already uh, interesting and exciting already. Though. But we got I got to tell you, Sky, I mean, these, these dinners are always successful. Yeah, we and, sell and this out one's really going to be a sellout as well. Sure, yeah. Right. But we, we got to go and we have to push to have people that are into this music that are passionate about this music <laughs> to show up to these dinners. Because quite frankly, okay, we can sell it out. But as I've, I've told this guy, you know, we have the pig and lady one. It bothers him that there's a lot of blanks. We got deers stairs. and headlights. We're playing, we're playing like deep cut hip hop deers tracks. Deers and headlights. Yeah. Most hip hop fans would okay. get excited. And, and most people are got their it's and then deer you know, and headlights. Okay, yeah. You know, uh, he does the Who This game where he plays, right, it, right. He plays the song and you're supposed to guess the artist. Right. Right? He does that in between courses. And he's going to do that for this one as well. And just the blank stares at the most obvious songs. <laughs> <laughs> it just it makes me just want to even take more medication. It's just it's ridiculous. <laughs> so like you give you have the contest and then the final song was Souls of Mischief ninety three till infinity. And nobody got that song. Nobody had a clue what that song yeah, was. It was real. And it I'm ready to stand a, up and I'm ready to not, punch the wall. Right let's now. not call out the pig and the lady because it wasn't at Pig it and the Lady. Well, it was at another No, event. it was at Pig and the Lady. It was it was, it was, it was, it was when I was at it was uh, the table right next to us. We were up in the, the top. I remember this oh, this thing. Oh yeah, and then oh yeah, yeah. The guy came out to you and was talking so trash. I'm, I'm quiet yeah, the entire right. night. I'm just, I don't want to deal with it. You play your hip-hop music. I'm just going to sit there and just eat. And all these guys are all deer in headlights. And I hope this isn't the case for the town. <laughs> but I'm just sitting there. And finally, this guy calls, calls me out from the back and be like, what, what's this table don't know about hip-hop? I'm like, uh, excuse me? <laughs> Kept quiet. And then that song came on. That entire table, blank, deers in headlights stairs. So I just stood up. I'm like, <laughs> I'm taking home the wine. <laughs> so I, I don't want that to happen at your dinner. <laughs> but that, that's the, well, the point I'm getting at is I just, I just hope that for the, for the listeners out there, for the people watching this that are truly into that no 93 till infinity, go to these dinners. These are great dinners. Right. The food is going to be excellent. That's music, all I'm trying to say. Yeah. Great. Dave's, and, right. Dave's, and Dave's conceptualizing the, the playlist with me in the flow of how the courses are coming out. So he's going to yep. be... You're going to get a, a, a cold appetizer. Then we're going to go into first course. Then right. there's going to be another little appetizer yeah. coming out. Like, and then we have another right. course and another course. And the music is going to build in either tempo or style right. of hip-hop uh, to the end. How sure. many courses are we looking at total? We got five total. Five courses. Okay. Uh, plus that, that little thing I mentioned is more yeah. so yeah. just like an amuse. Like a That's little, the amuse. So it's going to be it's kind of five things. courses, yeah. five wines. It's $110, but, $110, but all inclusive, including tax and tip. And that includes the uh, the wines uh, as yeah. well, right? Yeah, and, and the, the wine. wine. So wine, five food, courses, wine. five courses of food, five glasses of wine. Right. Tax and tip yeah, included, all inclusive. Tip included. Yeah, it's, it's the best deal. We should put like a little three question quiz on the Eventbrite. This way, you can't come if you can't pass. Oh, I like quiz, this. You know? Maybe wow. don't have. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Like don't, don't have no Aaron deer in the headlights. To avoid oh. the deer in the headlights, you have to pass. I'm telling this you, test. I love it. But yeah, we want to let people know right Listen now the event just went up today on Eventbrite. All right. uh, you look up on Eventbrite, A Tribe Called Town. That's the yep. hip-hop dinner. Uh, June 20th, 6.30. Okay. Uh, Town Kaimuki. Yep. Sounds excellent. So June 20th, Thursday. What, what's the, the start time on this? 6.30. Uh, 6.30. 630. Yep. Yeah. We're going to do one run. So it should be pretty fun. It's going to be one seating. Everyone. It's going to be a big party. Yeah. yeah. And the, the place lends itself well to like one, one group. And mm -hmm. it's, we already... Uh, tested. Did Sky's, we decide on the max? Okay. Sky's, uh, yeah, the sound we're going to try to cap it at 50, I okay. think. 50 yeah. people. Oh, 50, okay. Yeah. More than enough people. Yeah. Yeah. More than enough hip-hop yeah. people. Yeah, we'll hopefully. 
Uh, so I like this idea. I mean, there's get only this 20 in this room, so. Get this quiz. I like this idea. idea. You said you're going to do like a three question quiz, and then three if you get them quiz. wrong, then it says, we'll get back yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah we'll so get back to you. Yeah. You're on the wait list. We'll be kind about it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Because I, 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 once again, I mean, these are all going to be fun. This one's going to be fun. All the ones that you have done in the past are fun, Sky. So it's just like, just get that good. To increase the vibe even better, just yeah. get the good crowd. Well, it's, a, it's an honor to get to work with one of my favorite local chefs. Sounds yeah. exciting, man! I yeah. tell you, and nah, a friend of mine, and you know, and his ideas are incredible. And yeah, yeah so the, the finalized menu will be up really shortly. Yeah, we'll, we'll pop it up on the Eventbrite mm-hmm. site so you can check in. But yeah, excellent, excellent. Yeah, well, I tell you what, yeah. Dave, thanks thank, for coming thank on, man. You so straight much, from man. work, yeah, straight unreal. from work, yeah, unreal. Dave it, yeah. So June twentieth is the hip hop dinner. Give it up for Dave. Give it up for Dave. Woo! Welcome back, everyone. Ill Max here. How about it? Ill Max. Hey, what up, what up, what up? I tell you what, and this is your third time on the show, and strangely, you, you've never sat down in the, in the guest chair situation. No, you've always no. been in a weird situation. Yeah, yeah. So, I think I took your chair once. There was, no, we were behind the counter. Oh, yeah. We were at the, that was at the store. At the store. Yeah. Then we did the MMA show with right, IA, right, right. with Zima Zone. And then, that was the MMA boxing show, the Conor McGregor uh, the Mayweather, Mayweather fight. Mayweather fight, right? And yeah. then here we are, third times the charm for yourself. And now you, we're standing, and now yes, you're gonna perform. Are. So it's only fitting we get you to perform. Uh, what you been up to? What's the latest? I've uh, been doing a lot, man. Been busy like always, uh, making music, uh, working on um, new material. Actually, yeah. working on an album that I'm set to release in July. It's been almost two years I've been working on this album. Wow. The first song I recorded, I was just listening to was like the end of 2017 so it's it's due and i'm uh, doing it with scott otoro he's producing all the beats recording engineering the whole nine so it's gonna be on uh, i think he's on his way back okay he was in japan for the last month or so and he's coming back this week because he's coming to the hokus with us this weekend because his album with nick kurosawa yes yonsei is uh nominated for r&b album of the year so unreal unreal So let's get your insight on the because the, the first time you came on the show we were you're talking about your experience with the Hoku. So yeah, tell tell us for a, yeah it's exciting the man. This this year is super exciting. Yeah, the nominees are all dope. Um, we have Punahele, yeah, Punahele shout who's out. nominated. Yep. Paniolo, yeah 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 yeah. Yep. Uh, Paniolo Prince Paniolo and Prince. Queen Miley from yep. Molokai, Hano Hano Na Ehu and Miley Na Ehu. They're uh, nominated. Yep. Um, Ho Kanaka from Big yep. Island. Uh, John Pascal, super dope artist, amazing. Uh, just met him recently. Um, talked the last few years, but met him last year, actually, last, uh, I don't even remember when, but recently. And then uh, G Listen and the Meta Sons. Yeah. Also Shut nominated, yep. super dope. And then um, the fifth nominee, we don't know. He's from Kauai. I mean, we don't know him, but people know him, I'm sure, somewhere. Yeah. Uh, he goes by Lou Dog. And uh, so oh, he's the out. fifth nominee. And so they're all strong, and I've listened to, obviously, the four out of five I yeah. own because they're homies, and I've been following oh, them. Yeah. But Lou Dog's album is pretty dope, too, actually. I oh, seriously? Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got some material. Gotta find there. out more about him. And they're all dope, conscious hip-hop albums because nice. they're all talking about something. The lyrics yeah. have deep content on yeah. all the albums, so yeah. it's amazing. And they're all actually Hawaiians. Excellent. Right. Wow. So Hawaiians in the Hawaiian hip hop, Hofu course, category, right. which I won in 2012 as a non-Hawaiian. So that's right. Shout out. Yes, <laughs> he's a winner, everyone. Yeah. So we, we got to talk about it again because it was it was very fascinating when you when you first came on and talked about this yeah. the, the process that you went through, attending, yeah. and then winning. So yeah, no. I, so 2012 was the first year they actually separated hip hop from R and B, yeah. as far as a category. And shout out to Chris Styles. Angry Locals, IA, uh, all the guys that had, you know, submitted their albums for the category when it was hip hop and R&B because it was rough, you know, losing out to the R&B guy. It's like, yo, hip hop's being disrespected. So Chris Styles did that song, Dear Hara, and he called out Hara, the Hawaii Academy of Recording Artists, and saying that you guys are basically doing to us what NARA, the National Academy of Recording Artists, is doing to Hawaiian music, right? So I feel like that reached some ears and, and they actually separated the two categories. So I saw that kind of all go down and I had uh, finished recording my first solo album around that time. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to submit it. 
you know, it's hip hop and this is hip hop, yeah. let's do it. But as, a, as far as submitting it, I also became a member of Hara because I wanted to see how the whole process worked. Right. Right? I wanted to get the ballot in the mail. I wanted to see what everyone else is seeing, you know, see what the whole thing is about. And I learned a lot. And um, I've been telling people ever since about it, what, it's been seven yeah. years right. where I've been tooting the horn like, yo, you guys need to do he this really because has. <laughs> um, people still have the misconception that like you're somehow magically nominated without actually having to submit right. your material. And as an artist, independent artist, we have to kind of do everything. So a lot of times the artists don't know what like a label or, or a manager, a proper manager would do. So this is something that if you were on a label, your label would submit your album to all these different awards and things like that, which are only really just promotional opportunities. That's right. all they are. Right. No one needs to get their feelings caught up in something that really doesn't represent what the best album in hip hop right. is in Hawaii. For Hawaiian music, the hokus are great because they do really represent the best of the best. But when it comes to hip hop, it's just who knew about it, who submitted their album. Yeah. And like I say, this year is awesome because we have five nominees. The last few years, there was only like two or three nominees. Yeah. Um, I think three is the minimum. So these guys are, you think these guys are really, well, it seems like this year they're really listening to these albums because we're kind of questioning, are these guys listening to everything that's coming in and submitted? Well, listen, or? there's five nominees. Yeah this year there yeah. was only five submissions there you go right so those five <laughs> submissions automatically become finalists because how it works is you get all the submissions and yeah. then they'll listen to the submissions just to see if it fits in that category yeah so they have like people listening to it they're not listening to anything other than is this what it's saying it is yeah. right so then that uh, list of submissions goes out to all the academy members which i think there's about 600 or so and they vote on who the finalists are. And then those finalists are technically the nominees. Right. Right? But when there's only five submissions, those five submissions automatically become finalists. Right. Which was the same case when I ran, or uh, when I submitted my album in 2012, there was only four submissions that year. So all four instantly became finalists. Right. So yo, as a hip hop artist, just submit your, your album. Exactly. If you have an album that you own the beats to, and you can actually uh, sell it. and So that's the only requirement. It has to be something that you've put out okay. legitimately, right? Yep. Like no mixtapes, things like that. Right. But submit your album, and you could say that I'm a Hoku-nominated artist. Exactly. You know? And like I said, that title it's underneath. all a promotional opportunity. Exactly. You know? Your name will get put in the paper for the entire, mm -hmm. uh, all the islands will see the same thing. So all the hit, that's the way I looked at it. That's it. I'm going to yeah. submit my album. Marketing. And all the hip-hop heads in Hawaii are going to be like, yo, let me see who's nominated for Hip Hop Album of the Year. Right. Whether they're hating, they're loving, whatever it is. They're going to look. Like, they're going to look at it, and then if they don't know you, they're probably going to look you up. So. Correct. Automatic. You see? Marketing tips here. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, why, this, yeah. This, this, this is why we don't, like I said, we don't have Yahoo's on the show. Okay? We have good people, know what they're doing, businessmen. And this, with, legit is yeah, the no, I'm is terrible. The I'm terrible at business. I'm well, terrible we don't at go selling too far in music. That. I'm well, terrible. I waited two As years a, to make an album, so I don't know what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, but. exactly. No, Let, let's go to something current. Let's, well, shout out to uh, your stuff with Abarud. I gotta say, that, that's some. Oh yeah, that's some hot stuff. You haven't checked out. This band was uh, collab with Abarud. Yeah, good stuff. G yeah, good stuff. Uh, myself along with uh, Seth One were yeah. on a track. Shout out. Yeah, uh, shout out to Seth. I miss yep. that dude. Um, we were on a track with Abarud that we recorded. Um, when was this? Like 2013 or 14. Oh, really? It was a long time ago. Wow. It was a long time ago. The beat is made by Ezra Kavika. Uh, Ancient Path Sound, super dope producer, and uh, he's the one that actually got this whole thing together in the first place. You know, he he brought Abrud out. Abrud was yeah. staying at his house, yeah. so um, they did the, the songs, and he called his homie homies like MCs, myself, Seth, yeah, um, Paisley sang on some of them, uh, Maria Ramos, because that um, and that was released Drew in Imagination. Shout out to Drew. So those songs were almost ten years old. It came out. They were like 2019, six years, six six years, years old, 2013. Six years. Yeah, we recorded okay. them. That's why when it came out, I was like, I mean, that was, smile. That was, huh? old, that was young, ill nomadic. That was old and you sounded you sounded young. And yeah, <laughs> I was listening yeah, to yeah. that today. I was like, no, sure. yeah, it's funny because yeah. we recorded okay. that and um, originally it was supposed to be part of a compilation that we were gonna put out. Okay. But then um, it never really happened. We we never really got the momentum behind it to actually right. make it happen. So. Got I, it. Then I, I don't know exactly how it came about, but I think Abby basically hit up Ezra and, and those guys and said, hey, I want to take these tracks, put it out. 
as part of this album that's collaboration with Hawaii artists and other artists. That's excellent It's called stuff. Making Lava Tracks. It's dope. Yeah, Actually, it, Abrood is nice. one of my all-time favorites as oh, far yeah. as voice, delivery. Oh. It's just ridiculous. And they were just here, here uh, last times. month. Did you, did you go to no, the I did not go to AC that. Alone? I've actually seen Micah him. Micah 9. No, I, I'm too old, man. But I did see them back in 2000s. <laughs> 2019, not so much. 2018, that's so much. No, but yes, I did see it early 2000s. I did see it. Yeah, they're dope. AC they're Alone, still doing Micah their 9. thing, man. They're still Ganja doing K, their all of them guys. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But let's talk about not six years ago, but something current. Yeah. Let's go into your newest tracks here. So what's the latest stuff you got that um, was so going to perform tonight? Anyway, the album that I'm yeah. working on is called Second Language, and it's yeah. all beats by Scott Otoro. And some of those beats, um, some of those songs I've been performing out and about. Yeah. But what I'm going to do tonight is actually a beat that I got recently from Now, who no, is the, the current beat root grand yep. champion, uh, super dope young beat maker um, from Japan. Lived out here for a while. He won the beat route and then moved back to Japan like the next well, week or something. He bounce right out bounce. after. Yeah. Take the title and Take get out of there. Take the title there. and run. But right, after, right before he left, I, uh, I got this you beat. You caught him at the right yeah, time. Yeah, I caught Good. him right before he left. And um, So this beat is actually, uh, I'm just going to do some random uh, verses, but this is going to be a collaboration that I'm going to do with Kapu, uh, Mr. Kapu, Kapu Pajimola yeah. from Maui, who's one of the dopest Shut MCs up. ever from Hawaii. And if you don't know about Kapu, yep. just look up Mr. Kapu. Talking about business and promoting, we come from the same era where we're terrible at business and promoting. So, yeah. like, my man Kapu's got hundreds of songs, but he hasn't put out an album. So, I'm saying this to you now, Kapu, put out an album. We need to hear your music. So, but For anyway, real? this, this uh, beat that I got yeah. from now, I'm going to um, do a collaboration with Kapu. But got right it. now, got I'm just going to... Kick some We're just going to see what, what goes on. Bars is what yeah. they say. All right, everyone, once again, Illinomatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Sleep Time's over. Time to wake up all the sleeping heads. Shout out to Now on the beat. Shout out to your uh, Armenian homie, the pickle guy. I'm from Iran originally, so shout out to the Armenians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check, yeah. Ill nomadic seek signs, putting feet to the plan In a trance, whole clan, got the moon in our hands The mood of my land, somber through the storms of the sand I came in advance to warn through the beat of my pen Only within this understanding gotta begin Extend this raw cleanse, come and speak with a friend To float and ascend, defend a movement intent Resurrect the raw image, bring the soul to your skin Yeah, uh We'll see you at the surface where ancient tribes are made to live inside a circus. Prophets and sages are wasting away. The evolution lines that divide and decay. Rise up out of sleep, it's time to face that resistance and conjure the ways of our mystic connections. Existence perfected. Feminine vines are used to balance and reflect. I call these medicine lines. Yeah. Uh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You guys feeling that so far? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They call me ill nomadic. I've been all over the planet. Across the Atlantic as a child escaping static. I was born from the war that got its grip on the east. So I came to Hawaii seeking freedom and peace. Come to find out, I found the mark of the beast On Kanaka sacred land, turned to Waikiki streets Oh man, the world is really caught in the grip On that slave, old slave ship, they still cracking the whip Nah, we crack back with rap, stack with facts back From the days of the ancestors, here to bring the light back Birth of hip-hop, coincided with a time When young Hawaiian minds reawoke to see the crimes That they people was facing, that culture degradation Revolution, music, re-emergence of the ancients Synchronicity in the process Producing indigenous blueprints, bubble with the movements. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. See the light from my eyes. I got limited time with this voice and the choices I make when I climb. See that light in your vision when you're ready to fly. We be the night of the living born, ready to die. Hear the music and slowly begin to get high. Speaking truth to lyrics that you cannot deny. In the year of the poet, all that emptiness will fade, kid. When revolution sweeps through the avenues and changes the way. Yes, our people run with sages. Arrived on these shores, born to liberate cages. We ageless, the fame that ain't really where my taste is. Live in these pages and sweat motivation, so your conversation's aimless. My occupation is to represent the consciousness of those who couldn't make it. Taking it, breaking it, living in heaven on earth. 
face in the face in the ignorance we live and learn to shout when it feels right no doubt like a steel knife you want to keep it limited that ain't my concern music is my weapon and it's tailor-made to suit my intentions got the tools of the trade born indigenous with our souls to a blade quick to learn the knowledge getting smarter with age every single day getting smarter with age every single day getting smarter with age every single day getting smarter with age yeah 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 heart in your eyes i try Well done, well done. I fumbled one because I was looking at myself in this uh, camera. It's hypnotic, right? It's yeah, like I got <laughs> hypnotized by my own image. Yeah, exactly. It, it does that to you. Shout out to Nomadic, man. Thank you very much for coming on. Good stuff. Yeah, thanks always, for having man. me. So, album we're looking at. Oh, one more thing. Oh, Saturday, this Saturday night, we're having an after party after the Hoku Awards with oh. the Hoku nominated artists and a couple of uh, friends. Shout out to DJ Leansky. He's going to be on out, the ones yep. and twos. It's going to be at uh, Encore. Oh, right. In Encore Chinatown. Saloon, yeah. What time yeah. did that get started? Uh, probably 10 o'clock. Like wrap the show. Yeah, okay. we'll get there about 10 p.m. So come, come party with us. Minsky and, uh, DJ? At this Minsky's thing? Okay. DJ. Yeah, yeah. Excellent stuff, man. And uh, let's uh, we got here. Shout out to everyone that's been here. Everyone that's hanging out. Shout out to sponsors, the kind company. We got uh, some Nutella cupcakes. Is that right? Okay, Amazing. she's nodding at me yet. Uh, so shout out to Sakai and Kelly for doing the sound. Sky, oh, as always, good good stuff. Everyone here. Dave Caldero, if he's still here, probably not. Check us out on Patreon. We get out of here, automatic. We're out. Thank you for listening to Sleep Time's Over. Time's Over. No sleeping tonight.